In today's video, we're going to talk about what causes fish kills and what you can do about it. Hi guys, I'm Wes Goldsmith, Fish Management Specialist here at Aquatic Control. Today we're going to be talking about something really unfortunate that can happen in your pond at any given point. As the weather gets hotter and hotter, this can become more and more likely. We're talking about fish kills today. We're going to walk you through what you should know about your pond in the summertime, what causes your oxygen to crash, clues to watch for leading into a fish kill, and finally stick around till the end to see what you can do about it. All right, so first some quick facts about your pond in the summertime. First, just in general, the warmer the water is, the less oxygen it can hold. Second is fish are what are known as cold-blooded. This means their body temperature is going to match whatever their environment is. So the warmer the water, the warmer their body is, and that also means they need to respire more and they need to breathe more oxygen. Lastly, real quick, we'll talk about where the oxygen is located in your pond in the first place. So there's generally, in, in the summertime, there's two layers that will set up in your pond. The top layer is warm, that's where all your oxygen is. The bottom layer is very cool, and there's no oxygen down there because there's organic matter sitting at the bottom of your pond that's decomposing and sucking the oxygen out of the water down there. So those are some of the challenges that your pond have in the heat of the summertime. Now let's talk about what events can actually happen to crash the oxygen. So we'd be talking about cloudy weather, strong winds, and cold rain. First, how does cloudy weather create an oxygen crash? So Typically, throughout a normal day, you're going to have plants, algae, things of that nature will photosynthesize when the sun's out. This means it will be creating oxygen in the water for your pond. At night, when the sun goes down, these same plants and algae will be respiring, meaning they're consuming oxygen. And so then it's natural for your pond's oxygen to go down throughout the day a little bit. When the clouds come into play during the day, you get some storms or whatever roll in it's possible that it's dark enough outside where the plants and algae continue to respire and your oxygen continues to go down, or it's just not sunny enough to produce very much oxygen through photosynthesis. And over a couple day period, that can cause problems and you can lead to a fish kill. Strong winds can do something a little bit different. So again, we go back to the two layers in your pond. That thin layer on the top in the heat of the summer when winds blow in, they can start to mix those two layers. And that bottom layer is generally much bigger than the top layer. And so the, when the winds come and they turn up and mix your pond, the overall oxygen level can drop low enough and you can have a fish kill. Lastly is a heavy cold rain. So you have, again, your two layers, that top layer is warm, your bottom layer is cold. When you have a cold hard rain come in it can drop the temperature of that top layer to where those two layers will now mix a little bit and that can drop your oxygen so all three of these you can imagine one storm can come in and you can have cloudy weather strong winds and cold rain and it can lead to these issues all of these are a type of turnover event that you hear about um, that can cause your pond to turn over in the summertime and lead to a fish kill. So the term pond turnover is something that really gets talked about a lot. It is something that naturally happens every fall. As the temperatures cool down, your pond starts to flip over and in a healthy pond that shouldn't lead to issues. What we're talking about with these three bullet points is something that can happen in the summertime where you have a turnover event in the middle of the summer and it happens very quickly and it's a very drastic event and it can drop your oxygen and lead to a fish kill. All right, so now we're gonna talk about two situations that aren't your typical turnover event, but they still lead to oxygen depletion. So we're gonna talk about large amounts of algae or vegetation dying off. <clears throat> and we're gonna talk about large amounts of organic material or muck at the bottom of your pond. 
Both of these are reducing your oxygen through decomposition of organic material. First, we're gonna talk about how vegetation or algae dying off can lead to problems for your fish. So this can happen from treatment or the algae or vegetation just gets so dense that it begins to shade out the rest and things start to die. Once the algae or vegetation start to decompose, that's where the oxygen depletion comes into play. So they sink to the bottom, um, bacteria, things like that, start to decompose this organic matter and that process starts to use up the oxygen and can lead to issues. In a similar vein, older ponds that have built up a bunch of organic muck on the bottom, um, something similar can happen. You know, there's always bacteria trying to break this organic material down. Again, that process is using up some of your oxygen. So this in itself doesn't always lead to a fish kill, but it only takes one of these other events that we're talking about to tip over the edge and to lead to more issues. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some clues that you guys can be watching for on your pond that can indicate a fish kill may be happening soon or is you know, about to happen within a day or two. The first clue I would say is gonna be for you guys that are feeding your fish on a regular basis. Anytime you're feeding fish daily, uh, if you notice that they don't show up one day, that's a clear indicator that something is wrong. It's not always gonna be oxygen related, but oftentimes, especially this time of year, it's a good assumption that there's oxygen issues going on and, and you need to watch what you're doing. Next would be, again, watching for those planktonic algae blooms. If you see your pond water start to get really green, eventually that's gonna die off. It'll kind of turn brown. And as that water's turning brown, that algae is gonna start to decompose and that's gonna go back to what we were just talking about, decomposition, and they're gonna be using up your oxygen next two are sometimes a little bit too late to do much about it but you'll notice when a fish kill starts to happen or is about to happen you will notice fish gulping air at the top they'll be sipping really lethargic hanging out at the very very top of the water the top couple inches you'll be able to see them visually um, throughout the pond a lot of times the second one is very similar um, fish will actually start to jump on the bank um, it's a pretty crazy phenomenon, but they are trying to leave that body of water and get somewhere else because there's just no more oxygen and they know something bad is about to happen. Something to keep in mind, if you've had the unfortunate event, you've had fish die in your pond in a, in a larger scale that's clearly oxygen related. Once your pond has shown you that it can have an oxygen related fish kill, it's only a matter of time before it happens again. You may have a brand new pond that goes 20 years without having a fish kill. As soon as you have one, it may be another one, two, three or four years until it happens again, but it will happen again at some point. So now for the most important part of this video and probably why you're still here, how can we prevent these fish kills from happening? So the number one recommendation is always going to be aeration. You can have diffused aeration or you can have surface aeration. There's going to be a time and a place for both of those. Next is if you already have aeration and you see uh, some hot weather or cloudy weather coming in in the summertime, you should already be running your aeration systems 24 seven, but some people still put these mechanisms on a timer. Um, if you're one of those people, you really need to be running your equipment 24 seven leading into the hottest part of the year, cloudy weather, everything we've talked about today. The same goes for fountains, something similar to what you see behind me. Something to keep in mind is if you wait to start running your fountains and surface aerators 24 seven until you see fish at the surface or you see fish jumping up on the bank, it's likely gonna be too late. Um, you may save a few fish on the back end, but the, the main die off is already coming and it's gonna be too late. You wanna have this stuff running 24 seven leading into these this time of year. So lastly is just taking good care of your pond overall. So paying attention to the amount of nutrients that's running into your pond, utilizing a buffer strip or managing the ag runoff that's running in. Treating your vegetation and algae before it becomes problematic and you have large die-offs all at once. Uh, and then just managing a healthy fish population are all good ways to 
to avoid or reduce the likelihood of a fish kill. If you guys have any questions about anything we talked about today or need help with vegetation, fish management, algae management, anything like that, please feel free to give us a call.